Dr. Burke here again. Today we're going to show you what the shape of your poop can tell you about your health. We're also going to talk about the color of your poop. And I know it's a disgusting topic, but this is very important because first of all, everyone poops and identifying what's going on with your poop. You can tell what's going on with your entire digestion way before it shows up in a blood test. The most important thing to understand is a stool sample. Okay. They come like this right here, these little containers. Okay. You can see if I open it up, you can see the stool sample right here. Okay. You can see this right here and that's a little stool sample. That's my first joke. Don't worry. I'm not going to quit my day job. Let's first talk about what is normal poop look like. It looks like this. It's brown and it's shaped like a sausage. If the stool is these small little hard pellets or little balls, this usually means that the transit time or the time it took you to digest was a lot longer because something is wrong higher up in this digestive tract. Now let's talk about if your stool is softer, uh, not really formed that well, but it's not quite diarrhea. The most likely reason for this is that you're missing microbes because the microbes help you form this stool. And if they're not there, it's going to be fragmented and it's going to be soft. And it also could be some food allergies. Anytime your body has some type of allergy or some pathogen food poison, for example, your body is going to immediately get rid of it either with a complete flush, in which case your stool is going to be liquid or semi liquid. Problem is when you have diarrhea, it flushes all the good bacteria out as well. One of the things that works really good is to start consuming blackberries with some kefir or yogurt. You can blend it up to help put back in the microbes and it seemed to resolve it pretty quick. There's one more shape I want to talk about. It's kind of a thin pencil or a cigar shaped stool. If this thinner stool is present, there's some type of problem in your colon. Either your colon is impacted or you have maybe a lot of polyps or you have some obstruction. There's something going on in your large intestine that's causing this thinning of the stool. And that's definitely something you need to get checked out. Now let's get into the colors. The normal color of stool is brown. The color of your stool originally came from red blood cells, but really it's coming from the bile. Bile is something that is made by the liver. Bile comes down and gets stored in this little thing called the gallbladder right here. And then the gallbladder concentrates it. And then when you eat, it squeezes, contracts, and that bile goes into your small intestine. Then the pancreas right here releases an enzyme to help you break it down further into the tiny particles it needs to be absorbed. Let's say there's some type of problem in your liver, like it's a fatty liver, or you have some type of thickened sludge that's blocking this bile. Then what color is it still going to be? It's going to look light colored or gray. And this could be well before you even notice any problem in that area. If you look in the toilet and you notice your stool is floating, then there's fat in there and it's light colored, you know, right off the bat, there's some obstruction in the gallbladder or there's a problem in the liver. Let's say, for example, there is bile being produced. But the real problem is the pancreas. The stool is going to have a bad odor because it's not digested. You're going to notice the stool is greasy. That means there's a problem with the pancreas. One possibility could be cancer, but that's rare. The most likely reason is the pancreas is just exhausted because it's been overworking. Now let's talk about another color of your stool, black stool. This usually is more serious because it means there's blood that has been oxidized. And so let's say you had an ulcer higher up in your digestive tract or in your stomach, you're bleeding. And this could also come from taking some type of NSAID or like Tylenol or something that can cause uh, a problem in your stomach. There's other more common causes of black stool. Uh, you just ate a bunch of blueberries or blackberries that can do it. Now let's talk about red stool. A very common reason for that is you just ate a lot of beets because the pigment in beets is red. Another common cause is that you have a hemorrhoid because you're seeing actual blood in the stool. You need colonsonia root to solve that problem. If you don't have hemorrhoids, it could be bleeding somewhere in the large intestine. It's just something to look at and rule out things and, and figure out. If you have green stool, usually it's going to be chlorophyll. You just ate a bunch of kale or something green 
and it's not digested, so you're getting that pigment. The next thing I wanna tell you is that it's not normal to poop every few days. No, you need at least one to two bowel elimination events per day. The most important thing that you can do for your digestive tract is intermittent fasting. Some people that fast for three or four or five or six or seven days, and they still have bowel movements. Not as large, but the body actually is finally getting rid of stuff because the big problem on top of what you eat is the frequency of cramming so much food into the pie hole that your system never has a chance to reset. A very healthy thing is to start to skip breakfast and not to snack, have two meals a day. It's so therapeutic because it gives your digestive system a chance to reset and it gives it relief. There's another thing you need to know about in relationship to incomplete digestion. That usually is a situation where you don't have enough acid. As we age, we lose the stomach acid. For that condition, you need to add more acid to the stomach. And I would recommend betaine hydrochloride. Take a little bit and then each day increase it until those symptoms go away. If we don't have enough acid, we don't trigger the gallbladder to release bile. We don't trigger the pancreas to release its enzymes. So we end up with incomplete digestion and that can show up in the stool. Now that you know more about the shape of the stool and the color of the stool, the absolute best video that you can watch right now is how to make your own yogurt with al ruteri so you can get levels of like 300 billion per half of a cup this is a game changer you have to watch this video i put it up right here check it out right now hey before you leave i just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that i wrote this was one of the first books it's called dr berg body shapes it was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore. Actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress, and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.